software architecture is a relatively vast area. In this video, we'll talk about a step-by-step -step guide to becoming a software architect in 2023 and beyond. We'll look at a roadmap from roadmap.sh and walk through different skills that you need to acquire. And as I go along, I'll also share my experiences because I've been an architect. I've worked as an application architect, solution architect, enterprise architect in uh, over the experience of my career. So let's get started. So we are at roadmap.sh. Now this is a great website if you want to understand and build career roadmaps or you just want to understand how uh, a certain role is evolving in modern world. So there's front end, back end, DevOps, a multitude of different roles that they have tried to put in from system design to Python to, to different kinds of roles. And I think they have done a fantastic job at it. We are going to specifically be taking a look at software architect today. So let's start by looking at software architect and understand who an architect is. So an architect is somebody who makes high level design decisions. Now the level of abstraction and the level of high level can vary depending on the type of architect. For example, an application architect would take a look at application uh, that's given. A solution architect would take a look at multiple applications and how they interact. And, uh, you know, enterprise architects would typically take a more wider enterprise level view and look at how different business capabilities and different suite of applications uh, interact with each other. So, so there's, there's overlaps across each role, but that's an architect. So somebody who, you know, does a lot of technical standardization, tool conversation, design principles and all that. So that's an architect. The byproduct or the deliverable that, uh, you know, an architect produces is called a software architecture, which is again, uh, uh, I would say a high level picture or a low level representation. It can vary depending on the type of architect, uh, which combo, which covers the component tech stack modules, how they interact with it, deployment states, environments, so on and so forth. So that's what a software architecture is. So you can look at the definitions and I, I I've scanned through them and they are, they are really, really, uh, in my personal opinion, really good job. They have done a great job. So let's start here, right? You understand the basics. You look at what is a software architecture, who is an architect and there's different levels of architecture, which is what is talked here. So I think I just covered, right? Application architecture, solution architecture, enterprise architecture, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the highest level of architecture focus on multiple solutions, high level abstract design, all that. I've played all of the roles uh, throughout my career. You typically start with application architecture because that's a scope which you start as if you are a programmer developer, you go to a solution architect and then you go to an enterprise architect. Uh, you can keep bouncing between solution and enterprise depending on which you enjoy most. I personally enjoy solution architecture more because it still keeps me grounded to technology. I think the enterprise architects work much higher than uh, getting into the nuances of how each technology works. So that's what it is. Now you you then understand the basics, right? And there's a lot of basics in architecture. Architecture is not just about system design as a lot of people think. Uh, you know, this is, this is great depiction. So there's tech decisions, design and architecture decision, requirement elicitation, documentation, guidelines, you know, policing, a lot of standardization great amount of collaboration and you know there's a lot of ability to do consulting and coaching to young people and uh, when you talk this about this this is a very good definition of how multi spectrum the role is then moving on uh, you know important skills to learn apart from technical skills which we will go to i think it's again important and this is important in other roles also but when you are an architect uh, a large part of your job is interaction. A large part of your job is working with other people and, uh, uh, you know, supporting a lot of decision making by either simplifying uh, some conversations or, uh, you know, enabling, being the enabler in that group. So what are the important skills? Design and architecture, absolutely decision making. So I was just saying that simplifying, yeah. It sounds dumb, but trust me, simplifying things is uh, is very, very difficult. And um, uh, a lot of times that's what your most important role becomes because 
usually when you start a project there's lots of complexity there's lots of energy there's there's directions there's horses running in all directions and you have to collaborate collaborate and tie them together i think uh, one of the best quotes that uh, have been given to me is uh, you know when when you filter requirements from noise you have become a good architect so when you learn to filter requirements from noise you 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 move towards architecture uh communication definitely estimation big part of the job and evaluation you know you do estimation not like a poker planning which is usually span of days sometimes you do months and as you go grow more uh, into your experience you do multi year uh, estimations also sometimes uh consulting and coaching marketing balance definitely uh how to code uh is a very very debatable skill i think there's there's two sides some people believe architects should not code some people believe architects should code i am of the later belief i believe they should code or they should in the very least have the ability to do debug it is not important which programming language you know but it is important how programming works so as to appreciate the nuances that developers talk otherwise you you end up in something which is very popularly called as an ivory tower architect who just sits at the top and says hey do this without having a, a you know real picture of how it should be implemented then comes programming languages i think if you are an application architect you have typically started here one or the other because that's how you grow you 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 take an application you are a developer in that app you go to a lead developer and then you become a subject matter expert and then soon you are an application architect so you start here i think either one is fine a good understanding of pattern and design principles now know that these are uh most of these are design principles these are not architecture principles i think there's somewhere i saw that architecture principles are also covered yeah the, 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 no they are not so these are more design principles at a lower level of abstraction there's more like architecture patterns also which we can loosely think as these are architecture patterns uh, so patterns and designs definitely definitely there and then you got to learn some tools i think uh, git slack trello at listen uh, there's more i would uh, probably want to add uh, some devops also to the list uh, ci cd tooling is important uh, some testing tool knowledge is important uh, uh, there's this variety of tools you can learn like cloud management cli handling uh, shell scripting always comes in handy so tools can grow to a to a wide degree uh then look the ability to look at different architecture patterns like uh, right uh, you know there's serverless there's monolith there's, there's microservices there's layered there's client server there's three tiered there's n tiered there's distributed system service oriented architecture micro micro kernel architecture specific architectures for hardware uh mv mvvm mv mc or something like that uh, for mobile application so stunts of different architecture patterns out there knowledge of security is important i think uh, security architecture is a niche in itself people do specialize uh, in security uh, generally speaking but uh, some architects uh, probably would i think irrespective of who the architect is he or she must be aware of little bit of security like you know understand what a wasp is understand the guidelines wasp does you know know the auth strategies like what or to oidc uh, there's couple of more i think uh, microsoft used to have something i have forgotten uh, open id connectors saml yeah saml was the one i was trying to remember so these kind of security based implementation should be aware now if you are working with data right these are some specializations right uh, you might uh, want to know them if you are working in data and analytics i have worked fundamentally in this area so uh i think both are important skills the ability to know hadoop spark uh, data warehousing principle dwbi principle sql no sql different types of databases right why limit to sql no sql this this you know uh, you should uh, be aware of how to store well images how to transport images uh, compression techniques uh, file formats like parquet orc h5 stuff like that uh so there's sql no sql uh, graph tons of time series database tons of caching databases tons of different kind of databases so you should uh definitely definitely uh be try to try to move in this direction i'll i'll try to go fast i don't know how long i'm making this video apis and integration very important i think most people when they think of api they just think of rest 
but it's very very important to know message queues to know rpc grpc you know soap which is no longer used but you should be aware of it uh this this yeah graph cure i've already talked you know how to work with chatbots uh yeah, relay chats what's that called uh, uh stream I'm, I'm forgetting something like uh the the streaming part forgetting the word and uh, when you specialize on mobile if you're an architect working on mobile so uh, one thing to understand is architects typically tend to work with an area like analytics or web or cloud or networking or security and depending on how you have grown uh, you will specialize in one or the other so i have worked so far across generally speaking uh, most i haven't worked a lot with design principles uh, on mobile i have had the opportunity to work with android and ios both very important uh what else then frameworks yeah ba box is a requirement management framework togaf is an enterprise architecture framework uml i think is a modeling language i don't know what iaf is uh you can definitely look at some certifications togaf is itself a certification it's a very nice uh certification i've done that highly recommend it uh makes your uh you know whole thinking much louder and wider uh when it comes to having a framework so very good framework highly recommended uh i think these are optional the management frameworks are optional i've never done that i don't think there's a need for it you almost always has a have a you know scrum master or pmo people present in the team so i think they are okay uh networking though i'm not very strong in networking i do time to time refresh them uh, the concepts of networking very very important uh fundamentally you know looking at cloud these are very important concepts all of them i'll say infrastructure as a code cloud providers uh serverless concepts linux service mesh ci cd dev i think i talked about this before so they're just bringing it now containers cloud design patterns etc and then working on moving forward to more like le- developing enterprise uh, software and uh, working with different enterprise systems like sap emc ibm salesforce etc that just becomes part of the job so all in all i'll say architecture is a very multifaceted uh, skill and uh, i think this is a great road map to look at so, so i think as a, as as we just concluded right if you are a solution architect or a um, application architect growing towards solution or enterprise this tons of learning there you can specialize in different areas like web mobile analytics cloud uh, uh, networking enterprise software uh, and it's a very very enriching area i don't think uh, i think the width is extremely high i don't know of any other uh, role that has this much width to learn if you want to learn to program it will give you the ability to do that if you want to debug done ci cd absolutely cloud have to do uh, so all in all uh, i think software architecture uh, or architecture in general is a great great area to pursue uh, it it grows and opens up your mind about how you think about technology i think one thing which is not part of the list and i'll want to add that as a bonus is business and domain understanding uh, that as you grow and work becomes very very important because uh, what's happening is you're working in certain domain and domains have their own uh, you know architecture rules uh, there's a concept called domain driven architecture itself uh, but i'm not getting too much into that but uh, each domain will have its own style and uh, you know uh, types of architecture that you will see as a repetitive pattern for example marketing technologies you'll see a lot of utilization of google cloud if you're working in manufacturing you'll have to integrate with plant systems if you're working with mobile applications you'll see that you're working closer to a very rapid cycle of development and prototyping because there's ui changes involved if you're working with enterprise system integration you'll see there's a lot of vendor management things like that involved so different kind of domains uh, from a business perspective would require you to uh, build an understanding how that domain works and uh, what are the common practices followed within that domain and that's something very you know supplementary on top of all of this so thank you list to uh, thank you for listening to me i hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this video uh, do check out the roadmap.sh link i will put the link in the description till next time bye bye guys subscribe to my video